Lungworm, or Ava sorum, as it's known in Latin, is a parasite that dogs can become infected with after swallowing common garden slugs and snails carrying the larvae. Recent weather conditions have proved ideal for slug and snail populations, leading experts to warn of a continued rise in numbers in the UK. Research has shown that lungworm is spreading beyond the traditional geographic distribution, with 20% of veterinary practices across the country reporting at least one case. In response to this, scientists at the University of Exeter have embarked on a study to try and get a better understanding of snail movements in and around a typical British garden. We all know that dogs like to explore every nook and cranny in the garden. I think uh, we're not so aware about how much of the garden snails use. We think they're confined to the vegetable patch. Uh, and this is what this research is designed to show, is that in fact snails will explore similar patches to dogs, therefore come into contact with dogs during the day or at night. Uh, they'll perhaps explore uh, dog feces in the garden. They might explore dog toys in the garden. There are plenty of opportunities for dogs to meet with snails and slugs and possibly to expose themselves to this parasite. What we'd like to know is how far snails go and which parts of the garden they visit. Now, in order to do that, we've collected snails from around a typical uh, garden habitat and further afield as well, and we've asked friends and colleagues to bring us some snails. We're going to release them in a central point uh, in a garden, and we're going to follow their movements through the night. Some of these snails are going to be shining with LED lights so that we can see them, and others are marked with ultraviolet paint so that we can track them. We're going to be measuring their movement, monitoring which parts of the garden they prefer to visit, and how quickly, and we'll be monitoring them for the next few weeks as well to see where they end up. Once ingested and inside the dog's system, the lungworm parasite travels through the body, eventually ending up in the heart. If the infection is left untreated, the dog's health can rapidly deteriorate and can result in death. The study is part of an ongoing campaign to educate owners about the risks, as 84% of owners admit to not being able to identify the symptoms of the parasite in their dog, which may include coughing and wheezing, poor blood clotting and weight loss and poor appetite. Lots of different snails from lots of different sites around campus. Uh, we've, each snail we've marked individually so we can record exactly where they were picked up from and each individual site has been GPS tagged so we can return to it and match up to the individual snails. So it's been a long evening, we've been here through the night. We've been monitoring the snails every half an hour to see how far they're moving and how fast. It turns out that the fastest moving snails are moving consistently at about a metre every hour, but there are lots of snails that aren't moving quite so fast. So we need to take all this data back to the computer to analyse, to find out the average movement and the average exploration of a garden by a snail. This is important work for lots of reasons, I think. The movement of snails is not something that many people think about very much, apart from assuming that it's slow and not very significant. I think what we've been able to show is that it is relatively significant. A single snail can cover most of a British garden in one night. So we end up with one rather golden statistic, I think, which is the wave front of movement of these snails was one metre per hour. Dog owners need to be aware of where the slugs and snails are in their garden. It's not entirely clear exactly how the parasite is contracted and transmitted between slugs and snails and dogs, but accidental ingestion is likely to be the main cause. And from our results, we can see that snails and slugs take shelter during the day in crevices and in nooks and crannies. Some of those nooks and crannies could be the insides of dog toys or simply areas where dogs uh, like to forage for scraps of food.